Let's bring in Kurt Anderson, uh, of course, the author of Evil Geniuses. Kurt, let's just jump right right into it. Uh, the Wall Street Journal had an extraordinary in-depth investigation of Facebook. It showed that they knew that uh, drug cartels were using their pages. They knew that uh, sex traffickers, human traffickers were using their pages. Uh, they knew that some of the worst uh, human rights offenders were using their pages, and uh, the employees basically said they didn't do much at all about it. And then, of course, something that's close to all of us, teenage girls, they have internal documents their that show... Their platform Instagram. ...that their platform Instagram leads to suicidal ideations, leads to depression, leads to anxiety. It reminds me so much of Big Tobacco in the 1950s, but why won't Congress do anything about it? Well, I think... I'm a little hopeful that Congress is about to do something about it. I have been following this for a while, and there is a kind of rising wave on all different kinds of fronts and for all different kinds of reasons, reasons like the ones you just mentioned, of antipathy toward Facebook and, and Google, for that matter, YouTube. And, 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 you know, from the antitrust, they're too big and too powerful a level to the they're just a badly governed company that, as you say, knows all these bad things they're doing and just have made the decision, made the decision from Mark Zuckerberg on down to, no, we're not going to, we're not going to do a uh, deal with this because it, it would hurt our business model. It well, would hurt you, our you, you read the New York Times, they have made the calculation now, hey, we're just the, the hell with our critics. We're now going to start putting propaganda, Facebook propaganda in our news feeds. No, it's extraordinary. But as I say, I mean, you know, I mean, liberals... Uh, and pe progressives are when they see, oh, Josh Hawley is against uh, Facebook and big tech, or oh my gosh, the Attorney General of Texas it has this big uh, price fixing suit against Google and Facebook. Like, oh, do I want to be in bed with them? Yes, <laughs> hold your nose and be in bed because th there is a real bipartisan effort on all these fronts, on on the the antitrust fronts, on the price fixing, on these just bad actions that they do uh, across the board. And, and I think it's a real opportunity to, to have a, a meaningful uh, effort to regulate these, these guys. So it, it's not a publisher. This, let's just play but, their but, game. But it is. But let's just play their game, Willie. It's yeah. not a publisher. So is it a product that people are consuming? I mean, is there a basis for a class action lawsuit? I don't know. I mean, what? there's got to be some recourse here if now a platform that Facebook is behind, Instagram, is causing damage to teenage girls. That's according to their own studies. And that's the central question. What does, quote, doing something mean specifically? Let's take the Instagram example. If we know it's causing harm to teenage girls, what does Congress doing something look like? They're going to shut down the company, or what is what is the what is the piece of legislation that could remedy at least some of this? I mean, there's a lots of pieces of legislation. It is a new thing, so we don't have. I mean, this existing body of antitrust law from 100 and 140 years ago isn't suited to this this information right. set of information monopolies. But there there are lots of things. I mean, an FDA model is one thing. I mean, you can't put out drugs, you can't put out food without it being safe and, and without it being <laughs> at least safe. Um, th that, that kind of approach to, to what the, the enormous power of these companies, because Facebook, the, and they'll also say, among other things, oh, no, we're not a monopoly. There are other social media. Come on. They are Come certainly, on. for instance, in the advertising business, they and Google are effective monopolies. So there's another whole antitrust action you can take. There, there are means to regulate, but we need to invent new ones because they don't apply. This, this is an unprecedented, you know, in the last 20 years, we've got this new unprecedented set of, of powerful corporations like we've never had before. You know, I, I'm, I'm probably uh, in the minority here. I read the series, five-part series, Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Shocking, stunning, marvelous journalism. The question for me at the conclusion of reading all of the parts of the, of the series is we're talking about, you know, things like antitrust legislation, more hearings and everything. The question to me was the who of it. Who is Mark Zuckerberg? Mm. How? How did one guy along with Sheryl Sandberg, who's only in it for the billions that she's putting in her pocket. But how does this one guy 
achieve such power that he is able to basically tell the United States Congress? Can, can, can I ask a, a follow-up to that question? Yeah. Which I, I, I just, I can't, I, I can't figure it out. Who has been the last person that has been so, uh, so powerful that he's accountable to no one? Globally? Globally. Do we want to go there? Yeah. Yeah. But, but who's been the first person? I mean, you said the last person. I can't I, think of I, the I, first I, person. I mean, J.P. Morgan? Well, yeah. exactly. A hundred years ago? I'm, I'm actually oh, thinking okay. J.P. Morgan. You, 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 you can look at uh, Rockefeller uh, back when he had the standard oil monopoly. I mean, you have to go back 120 sure. years to find one person yeah. that is basically accountable to no one. Well, and he's especially accountable to no one uh, because of the way they've set up the governance of Facebook. We can, we would like to say, as is happening in the fossil fuel industry, to be shareholders of Facebook and start a Facebook, start a, a, a shareholder activist uh, movement. Well, that's impossible because he, he and his his captured board absolutely yeah. can ignore whatever shareholders yeah. want to do. So he is he is unaccountable, and and the power, as as we've said, is is also unprecedented. It's unbelievable. So so uh, really quickly, uh, how much time do we have, Alex? Ninety yeah. seconds. So answer this in ninety seconds. All right. Oh, good Why luck. did the House Democrats put out a bill that did absolutely nothing to go after a tax code that allows Nike to pay zero percent in taxes that allows? Uh, Amazon in the past to pay zero percent in taxes that don't go after the 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 it's super rich. Well, because and, and tax capital instead of just income because that's the habit the Democrats got into for forty years and have only in the last very few years and the very few months uh, kind of remember that oh yeah we were the party of labor once weren't we and and we weren't the party of capital and we had disagreements with Republicans and and so. They have not yet fully embraced uh, going back to the future and becoming the Democratic Party. Are they of afraid yours. of the super rich? Well, I mean, the donor class is the donor class, and and big Wall Street people give a lot of money to the Democrats, which inevitably has a moderating effect on on their willingness to take on uh, that giant issue. Yeah. All right, Kurt Anderson, thank you so much. Thank the you, book Evil Geniuses is now out in paperback. It's great to have you. Great conversation. Thanks, Mike, for staying all the way <laughs> to 9 o'clock on the Still East wearing Coast. Pants. Every day, oh, hands on. Prove it. Prove it. We yeah. expect you here. <laughs> that does it for us this morning. Stephanie Rule picks up the coverage right now. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.